Vocabulary has always been an important part of our homeschool, but after trying out various programs, I realized we might have not done it the right way, and I might have focused on the wrong way to teach it. Today, we'll talk about the difference between regular vocabulary curricula and academic vocabulary, and I will show you inside Evan Moore's Daily Academic Vocabulary 6, so stay tuned! Hi, I'm Nora from monkeymom.com with reviews and tips for homeschoolers. Thank you for being here. If you're new, please consider subscribing and turn the notifications on to see when I post new content. Evan Moore gave me their product to review and I was very impressed with the quality of daily academic vocabulary. So we will turn this into our official vocabulary curriculum for sixth grade. This video is part of a full blog post that you can find linked in the description below. For those of you that haven't heard about Evan Moore yet, they are well-known publishers of supplemental materials that have been creating quality books and workbooks for over 40 years. So what's academic vocabulary and how is it different from regular vocabulary? Many people think of academic vocabulary as specialized terms used in academic settings, but it's more than that. According to Evan Moore, academic vocabulary is that critical vocabulary that students meet again and again in their reading and classroom work across all content areas. As you can see, academic vocabulary here refers to terms used in various areas that aren't usually learned from regular sources by speaking or even reading. In my opinion, academic vocabulary is the capacity to express thoughts in an elegant manner by using precise terms. It takes the speaker or writer one step up every time they use a word like subsequently or conceptual, for example, in a correct phrase. It gives your ideas elevation and importance, making them stand out. There is a notable difference between academic words and technical vocabulary because academic vocabulary is more subtle and it's used widely across all subjects. So, academic vocabulary is more than specialized terms. Let's have a quick look at how daily academic vocabulary is set up before I tell you what we love about it. Daily Academic Vocabulary 6 is set up as a series of 36 weeks meant to cover one year of school. It covers 129 academic words, which you can easily consult in the content section. There are four spiral cumulative reviews for the full year, so two cumulative reviews per semester. The book begins with a teacher instruction on how you should implement the vocabulary to maximize learning. It also contains a special section for English language learners that can come in handy. There's an answer key at the end of the book followed by a set of transparencies. Every week follows the same structure, making it easy to fall into a routine with this book. Children learn four or five words per week and they focus on one or two per day. At the end of the week, they have an option for reviewing them all. You can see how a full week is set up. Every week starts with a teacher page with daily instruction for teachers and suggestions on presenting each word. I like that these are scripted so you don't need to think too much on how to implement them, making this an easy open and go curriculum. Days 1 to 4 are organized as half a page of word focused activities like fill in the blanks, choose the correct answer and short written answers. Day 5 is to review the week's words to fill the bubble answers and a short answer section. As I said, there are four cumulative reviews in the book and these reviews are different because they are split up into five days, continuing the lesson model. The reviews will happen on weeks 9, 18, 27 and 36. On the first page, the instructor gets ideas on how to conduct and enrich the review section. I love that daily academic vocabulary 6 is holding our hand even through the testing. On the left side you can see the list of all the words being reviewed. After that, there are four days of testing where kids demonstrate their knowledge of vocabulary by completing missing vocabulary words in short paragraphs. On the fifth day, there is a challenging activity like a crossword puzzle or cracking the code. For those of you that want to see inside the book, I will flip through all the pages.
As you could see, I've adapted this book to fit our home setting, since it's oriented to classroom use. There are plenty of ideas at the beginning of daily academic vocabulary on how to use it effectively, but I found that most of them cater to a school setting or at least a bigger family. Since I homeschool an only child, I had to make some adjustments. We do one week's worth of lessons in a single sitting and I use some simple games to make sure he grasps the meaning of each vocabulary word. I took the back transparencies and printed them on colored cardstock. Then I cut them into strips which we use like playing cards. I like to keep these all in a small vocabulary tray, always at hand, so we can revise these words as needed throughout the week. So here's how we do it step by step. I first read the word aloud and ask him what it means. Sometimes he already knows the meaning, so we just read the definition and examples. If he doesn't know the meaning, I will use even more suggested way of introducing the word. We continue doing this for all the words for the week, taking out our word cards for this. Then he fills the activities for the five days. On the second day, we play a game to review these words. When we get to a cumulative review, we play another game, like word hop, that reviews all words before the test. Here's an example of a lesson I am doing with my son. Okay, so we'll show you how we do a lesson from Evan Moore. I'm sorry about the sound quality because I'm recording this with my phone. Do you know what exaggerate means? Yes. What does it mean? Exaggerate means to... To make something... Bigger than it seems. Yes, bigger than it is. What's exaggeration? The noun of exaggerate. Yes, it's the noun of exaggerate. Here's the list with the two words. And we can read, exaggerate is a verb and it means to make something seem larger, more valuable, or more important than it is. Drawings sometimes exaggerate the size of a shark's teeth. What do they mean by that? That the shark's teeth are smaller than the drawings. Yes. So let's see the next words. The next one for the second day is minimize. Do you know what minimize means? Minimize is to make something small. So what do you make notice something. between exaggerate and minimize? What are they? They are kind of opposites. Yes. Hunger. <laughs> yes. What do you mean by that? That they feel like they can eat. A horse? <laughs> uh <-huh>. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay. Mm -hmm. The minimum amount of degrees Celsius possible is absolute zero. That's very interesting. Here. <laughs> thermometer certainly cannot show that. The thermometer will, won't be able to move at all anymore. Mm -hmm. Particles stop jiggling about them moving at absolute zero completely. Okay. Cards are here, and the first word is minimize. What does minimize mean? To make things as small as possible. Yes, you got it. Now we have the double words. Exaggerate and exaggeration. Exaggerate means to make something seem larger mm -hmm. and greater than it actually is yes. and exaggeration is the act of exaggerating excellent minimum what does minimum minimum mean? is the smallest possible amount very good
If you want to follow our model, you will only need some sticky notes of two different sizes. I have square sticky notes and strips of sticky notes like page markers only made of paper and washi tape sticky dots, an envelope and a set of word cards printed on colored cardstock from the back of your daily academic vocabulary book. I just use materials we have around to put together the following simple games. I've noticed that my son does well with these sorts of games, so I try to incorporate them in our school whenever I can, especially for review purposes. Sticky note match. On square sticky notes, I write the definition of the words. Each word goes on thin strips of sticky notes. I stick all of these, mixing them up on his desk. Then he needs to pair them up. Sentence dot. For every matched pair, my son will say a sentence using the vocabulary word. He will get a sticky dot for every correct sentence. Win award card. I'm using the transparencies as cards as I mentioned. I will either give him the word and he needs to explain its meaning or give him the definition and he needs to tell me the word. Every correct answer will win him the respective card which he can keep in his treasure trunk an envelope. Word hop. To review multiple past words before a cumulative review, for example, we will use the sticky notes with the vocabulary words as a game. I will stick the notes on the floor in a circle with enough room to jump next to them or on them while he stands in the middle. I read the definition and have him jump on the word that matches it. We have a history of not liking most vocabulary programs out there, so it was a surprise to see how well Daily Academic Vocabulary 6 fitted into our schedule. What I appreciate the most about it, like every other Evan Moore book from the Daily series, is that it's short and to the point, but there are other points that push this book into our curriculum for next year. It's flexible. I can easily adapt this to finish a week's worth of daily words into one sitting, or you you could just follow along for 36 weeks of vocabulary. It's easy to condense and modify to suit your needs. It makes it easier to use the new words in context daily. Unlike the books that put too much accent on text reading, daily academic vocabulary moves that focus on understanding how to use the words in daily contexts. I love that it offers my son opportunities to practice writing without overwhelming him. He's not doing great in writing, but I found the writing required in daily academic vocabulary to be just right for him. It helps him with sentence structure and expression without making him dread the assignment because it's short. We really like the questions as well. I love that most of the weeks have words from the same family, making it easier to compare and sort out the subtle differences in meaning. For example, propose, proposal and proposition are all presented in week two, making it easy to differentiate between them and making kids see how the same word can have subtle meaning differences if used as a different part of speech. I love that this puts some focus on grammar as well, making it easy to recognize and use the correct form of the word in a phrase. I love this approach to introducing vocabulary. While I love this book, I don't like one thing, the fact that it's focused on classroom use and it reflects in both the instruction and the tasks that kids need to do. But we can easily adapt most of them to home use, so this is not a problem. Our rating is 5 out of 5 stars because this book has become an invaluable asset to our homeschool's vocabulary approach. What are your expectations from vocabulary in your homeschool? Do you rely solely on reading or do you use a curriculum for this? Let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear about it. I hope this video has been useful. If you've enjoyed it, please hit the thumbs up button and don't forget to subscribe. Until next time, stay curious!